us a bit later here on today's edition of NFL Now. Let's get to the Cowboys and the Chargers. The defense, having some issues with the defense, well, they have similar Cowboys defense this week, Greg. No, I don't think so. I think they're going to score a lot of points. 34 to 26, the Chargers win. I have a question for you, Greg. 34 to 26, he thinks the Chargers win. Interesting. Hang on for a second here, guys. Hold on. My guess is you can count those on one hand. You count those on one finger with one time. And now they don't have DeMarcus Lawrence. They don't have Randy Gregory. And as I mentioned, I really like this Chargers offensive line. You know I love Justin Herbert. I think he was right here. Hang on. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, this literally does not work. Um, Um, interesting thing, he just said he believes that the Chargers score a whole lot of points and they win 36-24 over the Dallas Cowboys. Wow. So they're already saying the Cowboys have no chance whatsoever. Now, I am known as the village idiot, and I'm okay with that. People literally will say, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't work for NFL Network and all these things, and, and so and then that's cool. That's true. That's very very true. I don't know what I'm talking about. Not like Adam Schefter or you know those guys. I get you. I don't know everything, and I don't pretend to know everything. But an interesting thing is happening in practice today. Not a game, not a game now. We're talking about practice. Well, here's what I started with. From the time that Demarcus Lawrence got hurt, Demarcus Lawrence hurt his foot, and they said he was going to get imaging done. I said, what I would look at doing is having Micah Parsons basically being outside linebacker and we use more of a 3-4 defense. I said you want to get your playmakers out there. Now we've had people that say, oh, let's just go ahead and um, let's go ahead and sign somebody. Let's make a trade. Everybody always wants to trade. Let's trade. Let's trade. I'm telling you, it's a fucking fantasy football that has ruined real football. I'm serious. It is fantasy freaking football and all you mother humpers that think all you have to do is just, oh, we can just trade for somebody. We'll take some garbage and we'll trade it and we'll get, you know, an all-star. Come on, man. Get out of here with that crap. You can't do it. And at this point, bringing in somebody who's injured, somebody who doesn't know your system, it's not worth it. It's not going to work. It's too late. The die is cast. So you need to work with what you have already. And that is Micah Parsons. And lo and behold, her Mickey Spagnola, Mickey Spagnola says that today, lo and behold, Micah Parsons is working with the defensive line. Isn't that what he was doing last week? Well, he's doing it a whole lot more this week. Last week he was doing you know, some packages. He wasn't doing Here you go. Uh, some of those packages. All right, the, another one's done. So you're going to see Micah Parsons coming off the edge. I got no problem with that. He's a playmaker. And what you may find out, and this is where I find it almost funny, 
is a lot of times you do things out of necessity that you think are just going to be just something to get you by and it ends up turning out to be something that works out really really well and I'm telling you I look at Micah Parsons and I think of Lawrence Taylor now we also have a game tonight can you believe it we got you know what I think Rashid is going to be sick tonight Mike I really do interesting statistics Daniel Jones has has over 40 turnovers in his short career. We saw we saw Rasheed literally saying, uh, you know, don't fumble it, Danny. Don't fumble it, Danny. Don't fumble it, and he fumbled. He fumbled it flat out. I think Washington gets the win, and I think that this is the beginning of the end of Daniel Jones and Jason Garrett. It was almost hilarious listening to the pick segment here before it came out. I don't know how to rewind here with Direct TV. Yeah, I, I don't think you rewind on it, but they were literally talking about Jason Garrett just, just trying to hang on, you know, with Daniel Jones. And that's the truth. That offense has been putrid. Daniel Jones has had 18 lost fumbles and 32 fumbles already in his career. And with that offensive line, that offensive line is terrible. And you have to look at Barkley, who is questionable to play tonight. The, the, the Giants, why they trotted him out there. You know, we've been sitting here hearing, you know, they're talking about, well, Zeke Elliott, life without Zeke Elliott this season. Because we played against a great defense, and he couldn't run. Even with that, he still got three yards of carry. Barkley only got 2.4 yards of carry. He looked bad. I mean, not just that he was, you know, smothered by the defenses. He literally looks like he can't run anymore. And I think for somebody, you know, they keep putting up here, touting him as this great player and game changer. He's only got 2,300 yards rushing in his career. And you honestly have to start looking at this as a bust label. <laughs> am, am I wrong, Mike? You think I'm wrong? I honestly think that they... That they compared the two because they went to high school. That's all the reason. But, you know, I mean, you know, for a first round draft pick, sorry, the guy is ass. It's just not there. Um, Washington, I think they've got the better defense that will smother Daniel Jones and they'll get some takeaways and they'll give some easy, easy opportunities for the Washington football team. I think that we are literally about to look at one of the ugliest games that you're ever going to see because I, I just don't see. Daniel Jones in that offense led by Jason Garrett, any good. Um, Washington, I actually think that with Tyler Heineke, Heineke, I, I, don't sleep on that guy. He's like a gunslinger, and I think he could do some damage um, this year. But I don't think Washington is as good as everybody says that they are. Uh, again, when I was talking to Philly 500 and pointing it out, you know, he's like, you know, I think it's the Cowboys and the Eagles are the two best teams in the division. Well, time will tell on that one, but I got to say that I still believe that Washington has been way overrated. They had seven victories last year, which there were 19 teams that had seven or more victories, 19 other ones. And if you want to say teams that had a better, better record, I want to say 17 teams had a better record than the Washington football team. So clearly that's average to below average as far as victories and you played in the worst division in football and mind you i hate to say it but two of the victories were against the cowboys and we sucked two of the victories were against the eagles and they sucked another one was san francisco with josh rosen another one was uh the Bengals, and the last one the only one you could say that was a quality win was the steelers so to me, that's overration to the nth degree. But what do I know? I am just the village idiot. But I do know Micah Parsons is practicing with the D-line. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.